Hey guys, it's Audrey Steeman, and in this video I'm going to be walking you through my After Effects file and creating kind of an evergreen um, esports motion graphic intro, bumper, transition kind of uh, motion design. Currently this motion design sequence is kind of featured in Vandal's podcast as well as Vandal's Conquest documentary first episode. It's a pretty simple motion design sequence and it actually uses a couple of the principles that I touched on in my seven motion design tricks for After Effects and esports design video. It's especially good for title cards or if you're introducing a, a player name. I have a couple assets in this file that I have from uh, asset packs and stuff like that, but you can easily recreate any of these using Adobe Illustrator or kind of creating your own textures and stuff too. Unfortunately, I won't be providing this After Effects file this time uh, just because it's technically owned by Vandal, but it's super easy to recreate and you can kind of push and pull uh, whatever elements you want from this. So let's get into After Effects and I'll walk you through my file. So here we are in my After Effects file. This is technically my file for the podcast, but really it's this intro part that I'm going to be focusing on. So the sequence is super short and all of these elements, it might look kind of daunting the amount of layers that are here, but for motion designers, this is kind of little to nothing. <laughs> and really, again, it's just layering um, a good couple of graphics and having them come in and out and then having a prime focus moment here. I think this is the most important part, especially with text, you want to be able to have at least a second or two of readability and to be able to have the viewer read it a couple times in their head and just just know what that title is supposed to be. So this is definitely not suitable for giant phrases or sentences or anything like that. A pure title um, or name uh, essentially will, will be perfect for this kind of case. And then this is where you can kind of see the moving grain uh, the best, let that have its moment, and then all of the outside stuff kind of starts to go away before the the vandal podcast does and then it blurs out and then we're left with like a fraction of a second with this logo um with the vandal logo before it cuts to the the video um like podcast portion so if i kind of like take away everything here and kind of go layer by layer you can kind of see that it's really just a stacking of graphics and kind of a flashing through uh, various bits and pieces um, that kind of gives the illusion of motion, but really it's just a bunch of things kind of cutting in and out. So if we kind of take it layer by layer, um, you can see at the very bottom I start with just a plain orange solid background. Um, and to do that, you just go to layer new solid, and then you just put in whatever hex code um, that you need. And so I do that for about five frames, I think, and then it cuts to a black background, black solid, right on top of that. And then you can kind of see all throughout the sequence, I have this moving grain. And if you go watch the seven motion design for esports video that I made, um, this is probably one of the first principles that I kind of touch on um, and just making your own looping grain. And when it comes to the texture, you can either make your own textures. And there's also plenty of free resources out there that I also made another video about if you want to check that out. Um, but I made a looping grain uh, sequence here that just goes all throughout. And then here, um, I have the word Vandal um, kind of in some uh, large text here. And if we go to the character panel, I double click on that. It's in our brand font. I kind of manipulated the tracking and kerning and all that stuff to, to fit how I want it to, um, to kind of fill up the entire, entire frame. And I just set it on a stroke and no fill. Um, and then I have it duplicated on top of that. And then down here you can kind of see I have a brackets graphic. I take the text away um, I just have some very simple bracket kind of graphics on the top and bottom and you can easily make this in Illustrator and just kind of pull those in um, it's just a PNG it's nothing crazy I'm not animating these or morphing them or anything so again it's just static stuff any sequence that makes it look like it's in motion which is pretty cool and then the next part is this viewfinder graphic again the same same kind of thing it's just a png you can make this an illustrator then i also have the logo up here and if we solo out just the logo you can kind of see it actually animates in as well so i have that coming down with an easy ease if i press u to see all the keyframes the position starts up there goes there, stays there for a while, and then it goes down a little bit more, I guess. So nothing crazy, nothing revolutionary. So then we see a couple more graphics kind of come in. If I take away the logo, also take away this um, adjustment layer on top. And I'll actually take away the text a bit too, just to see the, the, gr the pure graphics part. So really it's just these three layers right here, and I guess this border 
part two that is just quickly coming in, gives that illusion of motion. The brackets there, a viewfinder, and then this kind of sawtoothy type of border here. I put that in orange just to kind of give a little more balance with the black, white, and orange. Um, have some accent of orange there for our brand color. So then if I bring in the text again, so that text just kind of comes in and out. And then we see the Vandal podcast. And again, this just kind of pops in. I'll solo this out. I'll actually change the composition settings just so you can see the, the background. So the Vandal podcast uh, text just pops on, uh, but I think there's a little animation to that too. If I press U to see the keyframes, similar motion with the logo where it all just kind of eases down like that, stays on screen for a bit. There's some keyframe offsetting here um, just for some visual interest and not everything being so um, synonymous with each other just to kind of mix it up a little bit. That Vandal logo moves down first and then Vandal podcast and then it just cuts off screen. Um, there's no fading out. There's no like wiping it off the screen or anything. It just cuts in and out with a little bit of uh, position keyframes. So this looks like a lot right here, um, but I think that's kind of the... The thing is to kind of introduce all these individual elements at first, have it all on screen, and then kind of pull um, those initial elements away again. So then for some tertiary kind of graphic elements that kind of act as some like texture, um, I added in some really small text on the sides here that are kind of acting like Easter eggs. So I actually have Vandal, uh, Justin, Xavier, and I's name on here, the founding members of Vandal, um, and then the location, um, both locations of vandal um kind of acting as like tertiary elements here on the on the edges and i actually added some i added a text effect to these i think it was the typewriter or no it was the range selector that kind of acts as like almost like a tech military code kind of vibe where where the letters kind of like jumble before it actually gets to the proper like word that it needs to be. So if I look at um, the word vandal here, oh, I just realized I'm, I messed up here. This isn't supposed to be called vandal. This is established. My bad. Name your layers and name them properly. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes. Okay, so with the established up here in the top corner, when you have a text layer, you should be able to go to text and then animate here, and it should be a character value that you manipulate. And then from there, it's just these variables, um, the range selector, that all Ultimately, these two variables here, this first one here is essentially saying um, how long you want the, the jittery likeness to, to be for the text, um, like how many letters you want it to kind of flip through until it's done, until it gets to that final product, which in this case, it's the established 2021. And then the second value here is how quickly the full amount of characters is typed on, if that makes sense. So here there's nothing typed on. And then by a couple frames, it technically has all the characters kind of like spaced out or a space for those characters. Um, but this top range selector is flipping through uh, characters to kind of fill that in the meantime. So it's kind of weird. You have to kind of experiment with this just a little bit, uh, but it's a super fun manipulator for text um, that's super easy. Uh, you can get some really cool results. But then by the end of this, I have this range selector, which again is kind of the, the typewriter effect, if you will, um, that kind of establishes when text is on or off screen. So here it's at 100% and then it goes back to zero. It kind of shows a little delay, but this keyframe that shows zero is technically when it should be like off screen. So hopefully that makes sense, um, but I just applied that same effect to all of these other um, border text elements here. So if we just solo those out and we look at all of their keyframes, I kind of gave them all similar timing and that let some of the offset kind of have one show up at a time. The names kind of come on quickly, kind of filter through the letters before it gets to our final names there. And then same for Columbus, Ohio and Phoenix, Arizona. So this bottom chunk of keyframes right here is it typing on. So technically, even though it's not on screen, technically it's fully typed on. And then this top uh, range selector effect here uh, filters through various characters and stuff until it gets to the final uh, Columbus, Ohio, Phoenix, Arizona. Again, towards the end, it's just reversing those keyframes and zeroing them out um, so that they type back off. So it has like an animation to, to type off. And just for a little bit of effect uh, towards the end, I added an adjustment layer. Um, and literally just added a 
Gaussian blur effect. We go to our effect controls. That's the only effect I have there. And you can see that it doesn't start until it gets to the point where the full logo and the Vandal podcast text is on there. If we look at the keyframes, it's literally just adjusting the, the blurriness. So here there's nothing. And then it starts off with about 40% blurriness. And then I just kind of like mess with it a little bit as if there's like a camera kind of trying to focus in. Um, Cause that's kind of part of the Vandal podcast. We're recording um, video of us talking with each other. So kind of wanted to have that, that effect there. Um, it's also just kind of a cool dynamic little field of view um, range there, which is nice. So then I have it focusing in and then a little bit out and then back in again. Um, so it just kind of looks like it's focusing um, a little bit more than once. Once everything is on screen for a little bit, just like anything else, have it animate reverse back out. And here's everything all together. So hopefully that made sense and hopefully that wasn't too uh, much to kind of filter through. But again, you can recreate any of this stuff uh, pretty easily and just getting the hang of the timing and just how fast and how long you want something on screen. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Be sure to check out the other video uh, touching on motion design tricks with After Effects uh, specifically for motion design. And if you haven't already, uh, it'd be super appreciated if you followed Vandal um, on Instagram and Twitter at Vandal or at Vandal Gaming. And also be sure to check out the Vandal podcast on Vandal's YouTube channel. We do videos every now and then, um, but we really get in depth about uh, the esports scene and just what we're doing as a as a small organization within esports, and uh, and what stuff's kind of coming up. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at Ball of Odd. It's Ball of Odd because Oddball was taken. And be sure to like the video, subscribe, and all the YouTube stuff. Uh, it lets me know what kind of stuff you guys like, um, what can be improved on, and uh, what other cool things I can kind of push out. Super appreciate you guys being here, and I'll see you next time.